So welcome back. So today we are leaving. It's Friday night. We just got off work. It's the day after Thanksgiving and we're going to check out a new campground. It's about an hour and a half away. It's called Burke Corral, I guess. Um, and it's right by a lake. It's by Roosevelt Lake. So we've never been to this area. It'll be fun to explore. And then this weekend we're going to check out the Tonto National Monument. That is our adventure for the weekend. So come along and let's see what adventure is open. So another update, we are driving there and there seems to be some clouds rolling in. We are going to see if, I mean, it doesn't say there's any rain. It says it's partly cloudy. I mean, there's a 24% chance and that does not mean that it's 24% of the area is gonna get rain. <laughs> Sorry, that just cracks me up. Um, so 24% chance of rain. So we just had the rain fly. I'm not really worried about it. So we'll see when we get there. from our damp camp. <laughs> so we got in last night. Ooh, the road is a little confusing. Google, for the second time, has taken us to the wrong location. But we found our way. Um, we were getting set up and sprinkles started happening. We were pretty much set up by the time it started raining kind of hard. And it rained off and on for a few hours. So um, yeah, everything's a little damp, but luckily we have our easy up. So. I don't know if you'll notice, but this is a different easy up. When we came home from Chiricahua, our, so when we unpack, we set the easy up by where we're gonna put our storage away. And we went in and put everything inside. Well, when we came out to put the easy up away, somebody had walked off with it. So luckily we were able to score this one through the Nellis auction, because my brother told me about it. That was an adventure in its own. We. This was our third attempt. The first one was missing, it was a very nice frame, but it just was missing the canopy. The second one was, the frame was broken. The third one is perfect. And we scored this amazing easy up with a wall panel for 60 bucks, I think it was. So yeah, very happy with that. Um, we've also upgraded our tables this time. Yeah. So we're excited. We're going to take a trip to the uh, Tonto National Monument today at some point. But right now I'm making coffee and then I'm going to start breakfast. So we'll see you later today. What are you making for breakfast? I am making Mount Man breakfast just because my husband likes it. And I'm going to attempt cinnamon rolls. 
Now we got me this cute little two quart Dutch oven and I've been practicing with it at home, kind of learning how, you know, how long things cook in a precise <laughs> temperature. So that way I have a better idea of like, okay, do I need more coals? Is this taking too long? You know, so that way I can learn to better cook over coals. Um, coals are supposed to be very precise, but I've just not had very much luck with it. So the last two times I've made this, I would buy the frozen potatoes with uh, bell peppers and onion and I would split it in half and I would buy a, like a pound of sausage and I'd split that in half. It's just two of us but we still would it, it would feed four people easily. So this time I split my potatoes into three and my sausage into three. So that's three meals for us you know for future camping trips. I just separate them at home and throw them in my freezer that way when we want to go camping I've got everything I need already in there and it's a good way to cut down on your camping costs I think oh I squeeze it Just squeeze it psh, psh. okay Ooh, that is very hot um so I purchased <laughs> well actually my husband found it for me um, a infrared thermometer so that way I can have a better idea of how hot my cast iron is while I'm cooking. So I've been preheating this and it's hotter than I think I, it says it's at 230. I need to start, I think I'm gonna get a little notebook so I can start writing down as I'm cooking and learning. So that way I have a better idea of what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm trying to do the scientific way about this. Okay, give those a stir. Now my little Dutch oven has been heating up over here. Um, before I did that, I took some parchment paper, I put it inside, I put my cinnamon rolls so that way they're already set to fit in there. Then I trimmed the edge of the uh, parchment paper so that way it doesn't like fold out. I greased it and I've been warming it up. So now my cinnamon rolls are prepped. I am going to put them in. I'm thinking I might set it on the ground to do this. <laughs> So I also picked up one of some of these, I don't know, older people will remember, like they would see them at picnics and stuff. And it just keeps any bugs from getting on my prepped food. And then they lay down flat. You know, they pop up like a little tent. And I'm coming on this. So I have just melted a half a stick of butter and a quarter cup of brown sugar. I'm going to mix that together. I'm sure everybody's seen this TikTok trend where they make the Cinnabon style cinnamon rolls. So that is just what I'm doing. So I have almost like a little caramel sauce. Okay. I have measured out some heavy cream. And then. I was trying to use the pour spout, but that's the wrong way.
just waiting on the cinnamon rolls. We're gonna let that cool. I find that if I let it cool a little bit, it separates from the cast iron much easier and I get less sticking. If I try and take it out right away, I end up with a little bit stuck. So the timer went off, but something kind of cool is I was testing it and now it's showing I'm at 320, 330. Um, my coals are dying down. But I was approximately through the cooking time about 340, between 340 and 350. So the lodge cooking method does seem to work with the coals. I have really come across the cowboy charcoal or something at Walmart, and I like it better than the name brand one. So let's see how this turned out. I think they're perfect. I am going to let them cool. I'm gonna put some frosting on them and we're gonna eat breakfast. Breakfast. Okay, so we thought the the Easy Up came up with the sidewall. It actually came with two half sidewalls, uh, but it actually works pretty good. So let me show you. It gives us a bit of privacy, and but but they're modular, so we can actually put both walls on one side. And we've got lots of tarps, so we can have like walls all around if we want. But this is pretty good. So good morning again. So we have had breakfast, we've cleaned up, we've relaxed a little bit. So now we're gonna take a little wander over to the lake to check it out. So we're gonna take you with us so you can see. So far, the parking, because this does get flooded, it does have signs and stuff. The parking is not great if you have a low profile vehicle like ours. Luckily they do usually make an area that you can park in. Not a big fan of the bathrooms, but I do like the size of our tent area or of our camp area we're just on a slope we did get this last minute so i have no real research here so we're going to kind of see what we can go find and this is what you get a picture of when you go to the site this is what you see you have no idea what your site is actually like so as you're coming through this is our campsite we're at 23 and because of the flooding and they had to move the dirt you have this big soft berm this is not easy <laughs> and that up there is just as soft when you go to the website the gov website to pick a site all you're going to see is this area you're not going to see where you walk over to where the camping area is so hopefully we can give you a little bit of info so this is campsite 22 it is just as slanted and i believe it's a first come first serve um, site this campground every other or every odd or even uh, must be every even uh, campsite is a first come first serve only odd sites can be reserved It'd be nice to come out here during the summer. I mean, if you had a paddleboard or kayak, this is amazing. I can get a patch to be a junior ranger. Not so junior, junior ranger. Okay, so we're in the green still. Boom! So, and it's cool because we got it's September 1st, 
October 7th, October 21st. And we did November 5th, November 25th. We're getting there. And I picked up my next Junior Ranger booklet. This one's much nicer than the Chiricahua one. Holy moly. I think it's cool when they have them on the inside. So they use tubular rock. They would build one and let it dry, and then so you'll see a line where they start the next one. It's called a cold joint. So, hi you guys. So I am at the Tonto National Monument. And we are going to go, let's see if I can find it. Oh, oh there it is. Let's see, we're gonna turn you around. So we're gonna go way up there to the cliff dwellings. I'm all excited. It's about a half mile hike up, but it's very steep. It is paved though. the desert's rainfall comes with the arrival of summer thunderstorms. Dark clouds roll over a desert valley. From its origins in the forested highlands and the white mountains, the salt cascades into this desert landscape and the desert lowlands to the south. Tonto National Monument, east of Phoenix. It is both fast flowering desert plants explode into life after the first rains of spring. White yellow. Dark from flower to flower. While high above, I think that's what we saw. The desert is the natural environment for these specially adapted animals. A speckled bird. I'm out of breath already. Oh look, there's a sign to stop and read. <laughs> because there's a picture of a macaw parrot. And I'm like, I don't recall hearing parrots are from here. So I read it and apparently archeologists have found macaw remains and people down in central Mexico would come up and trade the macaws for sacrifices. <laughs> so yes, they sacrificed parrots. <laughs> So we are maybe a third of the way, <laughs> maybe, but it's pretty steep. I'm taking a break, but the view is amazing. We're almost to the next sign. So you can see how you have kind of like the waves going up the cactus. So somewhere I was, I read at one of these parks or something that like rings in a tree, you can tell like the season and the drought uh, for each year based on like how fat, I guess each ring is. So the taller the ring is, or you mean how, how, how it sticks out? I think it's wide. So okay. it's like fat, you know, like summer, winter, summer, winter as it's growing. So when they're just, when they don't puff out that much, that's not, wasn't a very good. So I don't know if it's a whole year or if it's like, like a, summer, winter, summer, winter. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if it shows the seasons. I'm going to have to look more into it. But yeah, cactuses aren't just straight. 
there's texture to it. I was wondering because the uh, Roosevelt Lake was not here back at this time. It was just a river and I'm like that's a really long way to walk to get water and you have to have water especially out here. So it was showing that the river evaporates and you get condensation in your per precipitation and it would they would gather the drippings and stuff in their containers from the trees like when it would drip off, it would kind of collect and drip. So they weren't having to walk down to the river every day. And if they were smart during monsoons, they were probably storing a bunch. It's deep. It's only a half mile up and a half mile back, but it is crazy steep. Luckily, they do have benches throughout, or like periodically, they've got signs to read. So it makes it a easier hike, I guess. I mean, you can just power through, but you might as well appreciate this whole area. So I'm enjoying it. I may die, but... <laughs> there. I'm so excited. It's so cool. A drink. We finally made it. It's a half mile. I'm pretty sure it was straight up. I think we had to use ropes and climb. No, not really, but it was steep. Um, and it's amazing up here. So there is a ranger who is posted up here to answer any questions. They have a photo book with like a lot of pictures of the things here. Um, you are allowed to walk around inside them. They ask that you just don't mess with the walls, um, you know, climb in places, climb on stuff because it is over 700 years old. Um, on the way up, we found out about how there was a teacher who would bring her students in the 1800s to look at this. I mean, it's very amazing. Um, I'm surprised I didn't die on the way up here. <laughs> but, you know, as you said, we, we're really trying to get more active and really enjoy these places. So come explore with us and let's see what we find. clay and they would build up their walls but before they would get to the point where they could build another room above it they would have to wait for this to fully dry and harden and so you'll see hard lines and they call that a cold line so you know it's two different stories and when you come in there's a window here that's amazing that they have this wood still intact you can see where they did bore samples and they have little numbers in them 
but you can look inside and see inside the room as well as there is a thatched roof still intact in there. So they would use this grinding stone to grind the baked jojoba bean um, that we learned about in the video. They also, I'm sure, used like other Native Americans, the corn. They would also grind that into cornmeal to make um, food. So it's kind of neat. This is something that you actually can touch and feel. So these caves were naturally made. So this stone um, will break off and crumbles because there's a mineral in there that will, um, I don't know if it seeps in there or if it just disintegrates and so it breaks and weakens that. So when they found this cave, they just cleared out the rubble and started building inside. They did not um, create the cave. Now, several families would have lived here and they they would cook with each other, they would take care of each other's kids. It was that true takes a village situation. Out here in the arid desert of Arizona, high in the cliffs, it's a very amazing place to visit. that this wood is still here 700 years ago. Um, say, 
Um, I can't speak with certainty. You can see there's still some smoke that's kind of built up on okay. a little storage space. Um, for, for, so Could have been like a kiln. Possibly. You can imagine it would be pretty compact and get pretty warm in there as well. Um, but uh, nowadays it's a storage space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we have been exploring, you'll get to see some of this footage, um, it is an amazing location. Yes, the hike is steep, it is short, and it is well worth it. It is so rewarding to have come to see something like this. It, it's so amazing that people have things like this. You know, it's not, you know, because we went and saw the Wapaki ruins, which was very interesting. I loved it. But seeing ruins inside a cave just was so neat and like way up high into the mountains. It, it's, it, it's a highlight for me. It's definitely something I will remember for a long time. And I highly recommend that you come do it too. Now, if you are interested in something more, they do have tours. They are guided tours to the upper ruins, which is a mile and a half up and it is only open at certain times. So you'll need to check with the ranger station or you'll have to check with the visitor center to find out when those tours are available. One day I hope to be able to do that one. But I hope you enjoyed and thank you for coming along. Have a great night. Maybe it fell? No, it doesn't look like a break. I don't know. Constant remodeling. Only 161 rooms remain, one of which was newly discovered in October 2016. So it is uh, coming up on 7 o'clock. We had dinner, we are sitting around the fire and enjoying a bottle of wine. So it should be a nice evening just to relax. So we'll see you in the morning. Bye. Other sites you go to? Yeah, well, Chiricahua was my first oh, one. Nice. And it sounds like you were here yesterday. Yes. What was your most interesting thing that you saw or experienced? Well, going up there was really fun, like seeing like the wood still there for 700 years. That's that's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> and this one has a certificate in the back. We're official here. Yes, you, your book is much more fancy than Chiricahua's. Um, and then I always give folks the option, would you like to take the Junior Ranger Pledge? Uh, well, I did it last time, so I think we're good this time, or, huh? Okay. So no pledge? Yeah, not this okay. time. <laughs> well, congratulations. This is your second one? Yes. Number two, Junior Ranger. I know I'm going to get myself a vest, and then that way I can put on my pants. Um, and then we do have a spot for the cancellation stamp. Over on that oh, corner. that's um, cool. Stamp it so you know what day you were born. That is very cool. So I... It is now dated. Yay, I got a Tonto one.